Hello everyone, welcome back. So this is the sixth laboratory session that we are having in the functional and conceptual design course. In every uh, lab course what we are trying to do is to look at our theory, uh, whatever you learned in the theory and then see how we can implement that for a product in the lab or at least practically how can we use those principles for redesigning a product. This is what we actually uh, we have been doing for the last few sessions. So, in this session also we will uh, uh, do a similar exercise and this time the product will be a vacuum cleaner. Most of you will be aware of this product. So, most of you will be aware about this product vacuum cleaner you might have used this you must be having this at home or you might have seen somebody using this uh, product. So, as usual we will uh, do a, a dissection of the uh, product try to identify all the, the, the main function of the product and then try to find out the I mean try to get all the parts identified and then look at each part how it how this part is contributing to the main function of the product. But as an exercise to uh, reinforce our theoretical learning we will be doing the exercise of preparing a house of quality and technical specification for this product. If you want to redesign this product and you know the customer needs you can identify the customer needs. How do we use these uh, needs in order to develop the house of quality and technical specification for the product. And you know what is house of quality and you know what is technical specification. So, a technical specification is basically to convert the subjective needs of the customer to an objective value and then use this information in the house of quality in order to compare the products existing products with the products you want product you want to design and then see what should be the target values for this technical specification. So, the house of quality will give you the, the target values for specification it will help you to compare the products in the market and benchmark the products in the market and as well as it will help you to identify the technological conflicts and the challenges that you may face in designing the product. So, this is what is going to be done in this experiment. Okay, so, the objectives as in the case the previous cases the three will be the first three will be the same the functioning of the product parts parts list assembly chart. So, then uh, for some of the identified needs you prepare the need metric chart. So, you need to identify the metrics corresponding to each need and then prepare a need metric chart showing the, the dependency of this matrix with the needs. So, what what uh, which are the needs associated with the a corresponding matrix and how they are related whether there is a strong relation or a weak relation need to be identified. So, that is basically the, the need matrix chart. So, that you need to prepare the need matrix chart and then the next stage is basically to the next step is to prepare the house of quality and in order to prepare the house of quality what you need to do is to identify the get the benchmarking values get the benchmarking values from the products which are available in the market as a group you can work out work on this identify the benchmarking uh, values and the, how the products are satisfying the market uh, currently and what kind of satisfaction they are providing whether they are highly satisfied or less satisfied can be identified and based on that and the metrics the values of the metric they use you can identify the target values. So, at the end of this you will be getting the metric and the target values that actually becomes the specification for the product that specs or the design specification for the product. So, at the end of this uh, need metric chart and house of uh, house of quality you should be able to specify the product or the, you should be able to get the product specification in terms of the matrix and values. For example, uh, what should be the weight of the product or what should be the, the temperature at which it should be uh, heated or what should be the uh, time it should take to in order to get a particular temperature. So, those things should be specified and that becomes the design specification for the product. So, this is what is expected from you in this product. Okay, so, if you look at the product as such you will see that the product is actually the vacuum cleaner and brand is Forbes and uh, the model is known as EC clean uh, for from this company. And if you look at the major functions you can see in the uh, in this product one of the main function is to collect the dust from the surface whether it is a carpet or a floor or a cushion you need to collect the dust 
and it is not that uh, just collect uh, dust you need to store it also you cannot simply throw it out. So, you need to have some mechanism to store the dust and then you need to I mean to do that you need to generate vacuum. So, how do you collect the dust you need to if you need to collect dust either you to uh, generate you have to generate the vacuum. And an additional function with uh, most of the uh, cleaner vacuum cleaners will be having is a blowing option that you can actually blow air. So, in order to do that you need to generate some pressure and to, to blow the air. So, that may be an additional function that you can see. So, these are the uh, main function that the product is doing. Now, you need to see how the different parts in the product are enabling this function or uh, supporting uh, these functions. So, that is that one you need to do in the exercise. So, the procedure is almost the same and uh, here we do not do the functional decomposition for the time being we will be doing only the uh, uh, house of quality that is what is needed in this particular exercise. So, please do the need identification and house of quality for this product. Okay. So, this is the uh, format and uh, again as I told you this is not this exercise we will be doing this later. So, in this exercise we will be doing the need metric. Okay, so, we will be uh, looking at the so as, we, as you know we will be doing the product dissection uh, procedure then we have the parts list then you have the assembly chart and then this is common for uh, all the reports and after this you will be looking at the need metric chart. So, as I told you you need to prepare the need metric chart and then show it in your reports and then you need to have the house of quality. So, all of you know how to prepare the house of quality uh, diagram provide all the information whatever is available with you and whatever you can actually if you are assuming some data you can actually mention that in the reports and prepare the house of quality and based on this specify what is the specification for the product the product specification to be mentioned in the report. So, this is what is expected from you in the report. I hope it is clear to you. So, you can uh, go to the uh, technical uh, assistant he will be or the teaching assistant he will be helping you with the product and the product dissection and then this part the need metric chart house of quality and product specifications to be done by you as a group and then prepare the report and submit ok. Yeah, thank you very much. So, today we will be looking at a uh, vacuum cleaner. The main purpose of vacuum cleaner is to clean the households domestic areas in small households small places and it is not used for domestic like commercial purposes. So, first component that we are looking at is the brush. So, there are various brushes available for different purposes. So, this one is the crevice brush or corner brush which can be used for cleaning the corners whereas, uh, this is nothing but the extension or the extension hose. This is used for extending the reach of the vacuum cleaner. Suppose you want to reach by the places where you cannot easily get the vacuum cleaner to, you can use this to reach that. This is nothing but the floor, the floor or carpet cleaning brush. The purpose of this is you place it on the floor, rub it. So, the bristles over here will disengage the dust and that will get attracted through this place and that will go inside the vacuum cleaner. So, in order to use this, we need to use this extension rod. The purpose of this extension rod is similar to the flexible hose just to re increase the reach. So, the other brush that we have got is, is nothing but the upholstery brush or this the purpose of this brush is rather to use for, for cleaning sofas, cushions and the bristles, the, the design of the bristles are such that it can easily remove the dust and that will get attracted through the hole. So, we have got the power cord of this product which connects to the 3 pin socket, the traditional 3 pin socket to the revolt 50 hertz and on the other end we have got the on off switch which can be seen over here and then the other end goes to the motor. So, before we dissect this product there is this additional component we can see. So, this product is not just a vacuum cleaner, it also acts as a blower. So, what you can do is in some places the vacuum cleaner might not be able to create enough suction pressure. So, what we do is we use this, remove this component from the back and attach this. 
So now this vacuum cleaner can be used as a blower. So initially, if you can see this component, this is nothing but the rear filter cover. So the purpose of this component is to remove the exhaust gas, the gas, the air that gets sucked in from here, over here. However, when we remove this and put this, so this is nothing but the blower end. So now the vacuum cleaner acts as a blower and the air gets blown out from this end. So this can be used to remove the hard dust that, that is very sticky on the surface and later on you can easily attract it through the vacuum cleaner. So that was the purpose of blower. Okay. So the first component over here is nothing but the dust cup. The purpose of this is to attract the dust from this nozzle and store it in this rear, the filter cup. So this is nothing but the dust bag or the dust filter which stores the dust. And this is the dust cup. Now this is nothing but the shoulder strap. The shoulder strap is basically for easy carrying of the product. So we can't keep lifting the product for a long time. That might cause hand aches. So we can use this shoulder strap for hanging this vacuum cleaner in our shoulders and that will give more comfort. Okay, so this is the, the main, the heart of the vacuum cleaner. Now this component, the outer component is known as the housing. This is the right housing, this is the left housing. Now to separate it, you have to just pull this apart and we can keep it over here. And inside, you have got a motor. So we will be looking at the motor in a while. So we will remove this and keep it. So the design of this housing is such that the motor has the motor generates heat basically. So the design has the, the design of the housing is such that the heat generated from the motor expels easily. So that that's how it's designed. We can look at how the the grooves are made. There are projections at a lot of places. So the des the design is taken into consideration of the the motor before uh, making changes. So that was the housing. Yeah, one more thing. So this component is nothing but the dust cup release button. So when you want to pull this apart initially, the the component you have to press this button such that this mechanism will come out automatically. Otherwise, this is nothing but a snap fit, which is basically you just attach it and then push it. So that will get go and snap, get snapped with the housing part. So that was the dust cup. This was the dust cup release button. This one? Oh, this one. So this is the dust cup release button. Okay, so now we'll be looking at the motor. So before we go into the motor, as you can see, this is inside, this is nothing but the impeller. So this looks like a fan, the, actually it's not a fan. So in a traditional fan, the fin design, if you can see, the purpose of the fins is to blow air. Whereas in an impeller, the purpose is to create vacuum and because of that, the air will get sucked in. So this is the impeller and this is the impeller housing. On top of it, we have the motor. So this is nothing but a universal motor or also known as a serial motor. So it can work on both AC as well as DC, but the input that we will be giving here is AC. So that's why uh, we have got laminated stator. So I'll be explaining now. So this is the stator. As you can see, this iron core part is nothing but the stator. This is the copper winding and these are the, this is the commutator and the central part, the rotor is a rotor which is mounted on the shaft and there is a bearing. So this is nothing but a simple motor and it basically works on Fleming's right hand rule, uh, left hand rule, sorry. So basically how it works is change in flux generates a force and that drives the shaft and that rotates the impeller. So that's the working of the vacuum cleaner. So I think we have completed the, the components, the main components of the vacuum cleaner.
Okay, so this this was the product we looked at. It's a vacuum cleaner used for cleaning our households. Okay, so this is the vacuum cleaner, and the main purpose of this is to clean clean our households for domestic purposes. There are several types. The evolution of vacuum cleaner happened since the 1800s, where people couldn't be able to clean the dust manually because of the manual effort required. So the vacuum cleaner was invented. Initially it was of a larger size. Now it has evolved to a, a compact one. Now this product has a little bit flaws as well. For example, it's, it's not, it, even though it's compact, it's quite heavy. It's difficult to carry. And one more thing, in, in, in case of power failure, we, can, uh, we can't use this product because we need electrical current. So instead of that, we can put rechargeable batteries inside this product, which can increase the flexibility as well. And one more thing, the product makes quite a bit of noise. So we can put some no noise deadening materials to reduce the NBH levels that are being generated by the product. So that's it.